Yeah, so we are deploying our network at scale across the US. Um, we are, you know, we like to say the numbers are not precise, but a thousand plus uh, sites uh, per month. Uh, we've been doing that for, for months now. And it's pure open RAN. Um, so we have the, the Fujitsu radios uh, on top of the mast. And uh, at the bottom of the, of the tower, it's, uh, it's pure open RAN and pure cloud. So everything is on Kubernetes. Uh, everything is on uh, uh, data center processors uh, at the bottom of the tower. And apart from the Fujitsu radios, everything we buy from the telco industry is pure software. And we've been very uh, strict uh, that everything had to be fully containerized and microservice based, which was a challenge at the beginning because everybody was coming with their classic software. And, yes. and uh, we all know that uh, it was a lot of work, but now we have it and it's working. Now, when when I'm listening to my colleagues, and by the way, I was very impressed with Docomo. I mean, um, I think what uh, Docomo is doing is extraordinary for our industry, and they have so much talent that we're going to tap into that yes. uh, uh, very uh, li ni nicely for us. Uh, but I'm surprised when I'm coming here, and how people think uh, Open Run is difficult. Actually, this is much easier. I, you know, I've been a vendor for uh, 30 years. Uh, the, the last 10 years, I was at Nokia in charge of uh, uh, the mobile uh, in industry there. And my job today is much easier. Wow. Open run is much easier. Wow. Because you're not carrying a, a ton of complexity of uh, uh, legacy and uh, you know, software that is overdue. And um, when we do integration, I mean, we've done that with you guys, yep. it takes a few weeks. As long as the vendors uh, uh, want to cooperate, it's a few weeks. So. I tell you, I mean, as a, as a consumer open run, it's much easier than what I hear, much easier. We talk a lot about the radios. I mean, for us, radios were easy. Um, we had, uh, I must say, we've had the tremendous support from Fujitsu. I mean, I've told you many times, uh, very great partner in Oran. So radios were easy, they worked. We have two radios. We have. Uh, a triple band and a dual band, and they are the smallest, the most compact radios uh, in the industry, and uh, very high performance. Now, the, the next uh, thing we focused on was the, the platform, because we talk a lot about the radio interface, but actually what is also extremely important is to have a virtualized RAN, mm -hmm. so you know the Kubernetes layer that we've put in place, the accelerators, the Intel, so we worked on that, and um, I must say that you know, at the beginning, we, people were telling us we would have real-time performance issues. It was difficult, and I must say that we've not seen that. Um, we've seen time to have uh, maturity of software, uh, some feature parity, but the real-time and the performance uh, came very fast for us, and, and we are reaching all the peak rates uh, that are supposed to be reached in 5G by theory and 3GPP in the field. I mean, we, yes. uh, we're doing carrier aggregation, multi-carrier aggregation, we're doing handovers, we, you know, we, have, we have the luxury of, of having low band spectrum and mid band, and, and we are doing all sorts of combinations. So the, I, I think it takes time, but that, that was a, a normal process. Now, the, the next thing I'm very excited about is the rig. Um, I think people underestimate. The rig for me is the, the most beautiful part of Open RAN because this is data. Yes. Once I have access to data, I have so many dreams about what I can do. <laughs> um, you know, because once you have access to data, you can, you, you, you can shape the traffic, the user experience in a way that we never thought of. And I can tell you, we have tons of ideas there. Uh, so um, you know, it, it's going to be extraordinary to see all the innovation that, I, that will come on top of the rig. We've been working very hard on zero touch provisioning. I'm a, I'm a maniac when it comes to automation. Yes. Uh, you know that. <laughs> and uh, so we have it working. So it, it's not a short process because you have a lot, it's a data center, right? So, right. but we can, uh, I mean, the, the base station is coming up and self discovers the network, uh, routes itself into the cloud, and then we start downloading the drivers, uh, the, the Kubernetes layers and everything. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, the DU software, and you know we can we can do it with uh, it's software on demand. So I can put vendor A today, vendor B tomorrow, wow. 
and um, I can mix them. Um, I can put, uh, I can mix my uh, my cell side router uh, and my DU software. You know, just share the, the CPUs. At night, I can use my CPUs differently. Wow. Um, so it, it, it's so different and so much more fun. And I can bring new software patches all the time. You know, so we, I mean, you, you know that yes. too. We upload software every day uh, in all our sites. Um, but I can't wait to have accelerators. Uh, one of the things we're discovering, which is new to us, is that the amount of data uh, that we are getting back from the, uh, the fact that we observe everything is huge. Yes. So we have to pre-process the data um, in order to shape the traffic, shape the RF, uh, re-shape. Uh, we do a lot of machine learning and uh, mm -hmm. uh, automatic neighboring, automatic uh, handover, automatic handover uh, calibration and so forth. But the more we can do locally, uh, the, more, the more efficient it is and the cheapest it is. And yes. the good thing about a network is that it's empty most of the time. You know, a network has a peak, but then it does nothing. Right. So the nothing can be used awesome. with all that, those techniques we want to do at the, at the edge, right? As you know, we did not, uh, uh, we did not ask any system integrator to, to do any work for us. So we ask our vendors uh, to do the work themselves. Um, and uh, we distribute, so we don't have any labs at DISH. Um, we, we only have virtual labs, uh, like uh, Docomo was showing. So we, uh, our vendors have their labs, and we have access to those labs, and uh, they all come back to the network as a global network of testing. So we see everything, we can use everything, and we can move the, the, the loads from uh, development to integration to uh, pre-production production in a virtual manner with uh, full CICD. Mm. Um, so in terms of uh, integration, it's much faster um, and uh, we have a different mindset. I tell my vendors that, and you have heard it many times, the more faults, the happier I am, because mm -hmm. faults are there. So I want faults, faults, faults. I want test, 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 but I want a very fast cycle time to correct right. the faults. And you know, I have that TV in front of my office with all the, the checks and the automation yes. where everybody sees at the cycle time. Right. And it's all about movement and speed, right? Um, so now everybody in that, you know, the, the Dell, the Fujitsu, I mean, you guys have labs, uh, the Mavenir, they're all building an end-to-end view. Right. And we ask them to own that, right? They, they can't tell us, I don't understand. And, and yes. you have been there together, right? Yes. So I'm very happy with this. The, the risk of having a, an independent system integrator is that they don't have the deep knowledge. In DevOps, you need people to have the deep knowledge. You know, the engineers have to be the integrators, they have to be the testers, right. otherwise it's not fast. Yes. So it's, it's a different way of working. It's very much like the cloud and DevOps. So I'm not going to give all my secrets, but um, <laughs> because uh, you know we, we compete, but we have ideas of services that uh, I mean some of us have been dreaming of for the last decade, and uh, and we we can uh, now we know we can do them, and and they can be very disruptive in the consumer and enterprise market, in the way of managing mobility and services. So it, it's just uh, incredibly in terms of services. But in, as an architect, the, the thing that is very important for me is the data. Mm -hmm. You know, once you have the data, uh, you can do so much. You can optimize your spectrum, you can optimize your power, you can optimize your mobility, you can optimize uh, you know, the distribution of your, you know, sense the traffic, yes. and, uh, and you, you, you can uh, serve enterprises in a way that they, they have no idea of, they've never seen it. Um, so, but the thing that, is, that we start seeing now is that if you don't have automation, forget it. Yes. The amount of data and the complexity and the billions, we already have billions of parameters that you need to master. I mean, we've tried. Our engineers are like playing with it. It, it goes nowhere. You, so you have to automate. Now we have the luxury of having a green field so we don't have much traffic and uh, so we can play, but automation is key on day one and that's a, that's a place to invest. So that's really the software that we need, automation, automation. There are two reasons why Open RAN, you know, is uh, unstoppable. The first one is silicon. Um, the the amount of silicon that is coming in the telco industry, I, and I was, you know, a builder of base stations in the past. The amount is just surging. 
you know, we've, we've uh, all the players we have. So once, you know, once you get addicted to the silicon and the power of it, you, you just consume it. So it's unstoppable. Um, so, but the, the initiatives of people like uh, Docomo and to, to, to pre-consume of Rakuten, to pre-consume and test it, are very good. Yes. And because it's needed. A lot of operators don't have the, the patience or the capability to do all this engineering work we've been doing, and they should not, right? Yeah. And they're busy with their uh, existing network. So I'm convinced that now that you know big players are offering pre-integrated open run, people will start playing with it. And you have big players like the Vodafone, the Orange. I mean, these guys are big names. They are going to make it much easier over time. And, uh, and people will, will start feeling like we do, like, wow, we're so glad we have it, yes. uh, that it's going to be a no return. You know, once you touch it, you are addicted.